you know the basic difference between uv instrumentation and ir instrumentation is in uv we take solutions in ir we also take new jol and solution but we evaporate the solvent because the solvent will interfere with the spectra of the compound therefore it is better to use in a solid state here we you we do not use cells like cord cells or cuvettes as we do in uv because IR is opaque to quartz. We use KBR, sodium chloride pellets, just a sort of a small disc on which we put a sample. But we have to be very careful when we use the IR, the condition should be extremely dry. We have to put back dehydrating agents with the instrument. Temperature should be fairly high so that no moisture enters into the instrument, including the solvents. No trapping of solvents should be there near the inlet. So these are the care. Now coming back to the instrumentation, there are basically two types of instruments. One is called dispersing, the other is called non-dispersing. Dispersing I mean to say, when we have got a monochromator, that is the light, a bundle of light with different wavelengths is coming from the source, comes into this, we have to split that into different frequencies. We have to use, say for example, the earlier ones we used to put a prism that used to diffract the light into various frequencies we used to get a spectrum of light. Same was later on adopted by replacing prism by grating system. So we have grating system or the prism monochrome. And the second is non-dispersing where we do not disperse the light. We use directly the sample and we use Fourier transform. That is a mathematical equation which changes from the time domain to frequency domain. The bundle of signals, as we call called in NMR, FID, which is changed by mathematical equation, which we give in a computer. The signals are fed to the computer. It applies the mathematical equation and change the time domain into frequency domain. These are the basic two differences. And these days, we have got only the FTIRs available, and the cost has gone very low and we will be replacing all these grating but for theoretical reasons we have to explain what is grating. So I come back to the system. Number one, apart from monochromator, we have to pay attention to the light source. We used to have two lamps earlier, tungsten and mercury lamps with the different frequencies. Now we don't use these, we use the nursed system. That is, we use zirconium, yttrium, thorium, cerium, oxides, uh, as we call them as ceramic materials. They are semiconductors, but uh, very resistant to the heat. We heat it, we heat it to 1800 degrees Celsius. And once it is to this temperature, it gives radiations right up to 5000 to 7,000 centimeter inverse. And the beauty, one nurse method is these ceramic materials, oxides of zirconium, yttrium, or thorium. They go down up to the hundredth of this, few hundreds of this, even up to 650 centimeter. This is the light source that we use these days. This is most important. Then the second part, we got the light source. What happens to the light source? We have monochromators. Well, now we have got from the light source, the light, the light, I mean to say, it is bundle of frequencies or bundle of different wavelengths. We have to get all separated into different frequencies because each bond is associated, each property of the vibration is associated with single frequency. We have to split this bundle of light or a bundle of frequencies into various frequencies and that we call it dispersion. And dispersion, initially we were using what we call it monochromators like prism. You know, it diffracts light into various frequencies or we call it a big wavegoyer and all that. These are different frequencies. We use a monochromator. We use the second part will be monochromators. What are these? Initially it was a prism. Now we use grating. What are these gratings? 
you know that we get a metal polished surface. We make very, very small triangles in parallel, sort of a small prisms in parallel. Say, for example, in one millimeter, we put 20 triangles, that is engraving, engraving, and they are all in parallel, hundreds of them, thousands of them. In UV, we go, here we have got about 20 in one millimeter. In UV, we use 4,000 small triangles as grooves in parallel, and they diffract light into different frequencies. And then we have each mirror attached to them, and are collected by collectors, where we have detectors. So we have grating, that is one touch, that is we get a plate and we grew it. The second method is holographic, that is we use a photo sensitive, rather insensitive material on a glass, and then we put parallel two laser beams, which gives grooves, very, very tiny, you could say, triangle-like or a circle-like, in thousands. And, you know, in one millimeter, you got 20. Here we get in one millimeter, more than 4,000 grooves. And this is much more efficient grading system for getting splitted, diffracted a light source into different frequencies. That is holograph. The, after the, this grating, we have, with each frequency, we have a mirror. And the mirror is attached to detectors. So the third will be, detectors are basically of two types. That is, type one is where we put the light source, a single frequency is put on the surface. The electron is lifted, a hole is formed. When electron moves, the difference between two layers, a potential difference takes place, a current flows. Depending on the initial radiation, and we have detectors which collect. The second is the increase in the resistance. This is increase in conduction. The second method is increase in resistance. The best is what we call at a very low temperature, say nitrogen temperature, we get these. Say first is the detector we use is common one is indium antimonides. That is ISB. It is an alloy. It's a semiconductor. When the current falls, radiation falls on this, it takes out the electron and conduction takes place. Notice directly where it deflects, then we have amplifiers, which I will show you by diagram what happens. And then detection, then further purification, collimated, and focusing, we get a graph. This is in short. The second is what we call it the resistance method. That is a resistance method. Say we have got MCT, that is mercury, cadmium, telluride. Telluride is tellurium. It belongs to, it's available on it, but very volatile. It has number of isotopes. Atomic number is 52. And it comes into the same group as sulfur group. This is cadmium. You know, the whole thing over here, detector, is based on thermocouple. What is thermocouple? Conduction method. Thermocouple is, say, we use uh, bismuth and antimony, which have different conduction or resistance. They are joined at one point, like this. There is a thermocouple. That is head with the tail of the other one. And Radiation falls on the thermocouple, it heats. By heating, current flows. There is a difference in the current flows. And the current, the voltage of the current or the content of the current depends on the initial radiation. They all are, they give different names and different procedures, but basically they are thermocouples for conduction. And the most popular is what is called bismuth antimony couple. But here we use what is called mercury, cadmium, telluride. It is not for thermocouple. It is reverse of thermocouple. That is, we measure the resistance. What is happening? That we take at the bottom, which I will show you later on in the diagram, and put this material over there 
so solid state material is there and the temperature is about minus 9 that is liquid nitrogen temperature and when radiation takes place on this so called thermo reverse of thermocouple it heats when the heat is there resistance increase you know about you have got superconducting materials superconductor means uh, these ceramic materials when the temperature is reduced to minus 190 resistance becomes nearly zero as the temperature goes down resistance also goes down as the temperature goes high say for example in summers we lose lot of electricity because resistance increases so whenever the radiation falls on this MS, MCT the resistance for each degree increase 0.4 percent increase in resistance takes place and that is measured that is measured and we get corresponding frequency uh, there is a conversion and computers and all that you know I'm showing you are trying to explain how the instrument works in all the good infrared spectrometers we have to use a double beam that is the beam is split into two parts one will go through the sample, the other will go as a blank. If there is anything, stray peaks or stray frequencies, they get annulled. So that will, there will be no artifact. So double beam is always having an edge on a single beam. So I will try to explain how the instrument works. I again say sample is to be put on the KBR. We don't use a solvent here. A pellet and these days, which I will be talking to you for here, were no KBR pellet making machine is to be used in case of the grating. We take a powder KBR, mix it with the compound, make a pellet, and put in a sample. We used to do it long before that put get it uh, this pellet, put it the sample, and then put the nujol. Nujol is a hydrocarbon which doesn't show anything in the fingerprint regions and it has nothing but CH stretching and does not interfere with any organic molecules. But that has become an obsolete. We use KBR. The other method is put a pellet and get the sample in a solution, put it on the pellet, dry the pellet. And again, we cannot use cards because it is not transparent, transparent to the IR. So I go to the diagram and explain to you how it happened. So we have got the source, light source here. This light source is split into two. One goes to the mirror on the upper side as shown here, that is the blank. The second part, half of this, they have a mirror here also, go to the mirror and go to the sample. It passes through the sample and from there you have a chopper here it is again a mirror here again a, here it is a chopper here where it is mixed with the light coming uh, from the without a sample from the blank over here goes part of it goes directly to the recorder so the total artifacts are totally eliminated here the chopper mixes the two it mixing means doesn't mean it's alternating it's such a fine system very fast chopper that is alternating one Part of the fraction of a second light source from the sample comes, second part light source from the blank comes. It is alternating with these and go to the grating. Here the grating is a monochromator. It is a monochromator grating as I have explained that here the bundle of rays that is coming is split. In fact, I have shown one arrow. Here it is number of lines like this coming here and here it is a alternating coming single beam monochromator to the detector and detector matches the frequency with the sample and is amplified and here it is a motor which is resolving this into after the amplification goes to the recording a blank also mixes with this so that all artifacts are totally and we get a recorder a paper which is with a pen on and it moves this is exactly what happens to the race and we get it. This is the grating, you know, there are tangles over here, number of them, thousands of them in parallel. It's just a diagrammatic and it cannot be explained in a better way than this. And we get the IR graph here. This is the IR recorder. This is in brief. 
about the instrumentation.